Terry's idea was he didn't want to work with stars. He wanted people that you would just believe were the characters. His way was just to make it as real as possible, and to make it as real as possible would be people that you didn't recognize. So one of the things we had to do, we had to figure out which ones are the ones that are going to be the, the quote, stars of the movie without them being stars. Everybody wanted to be in this movie. And I was even looking back over these tapes, remembering that there were times that I would, I would stay in the office till 11 o'clock at night because one of, like Stephen Dorff was working but he had to audition, he just had to, and he, and he had worked on it, worked on it, and he, please, could I wait for him? And, you know, and so I'd wait and wait and wait, and he'd come in and we'd work until, you know, 11 or whatever. I didn't count up, but I know there were probably somewhere along the lines of 126 speaking parts. We had all of this research from old Life magazine articles and, uh, all sorts of books on World War II and pictures. I mean, there's loads and loads and loads of pictures of people of that time. And it was, it was, people looked older than they were. I mean, it's a very interesting thing when you look at these people and you realize they're at 18, 19 years old, but they look like men already. They're, so we, we use that as a sort of template of all of those to try to find people who, who didn't feel too contemporary. What we had to do was contact theaters in different places. Like the Guthrie has always been a very good source of actors for me. Um, the Seattle Theater Group. Um, so I sent letters to people and said what we were looking for. And people put themselves on tape or, you know, an acting teacher would put some of her clients on tape. And so we did receive a lot of tapes, particularly from Minnesota, from Texas, from Seattle, Chicago, a lot of people from Chicago. But that it, it just, I don't know what it is, but people in small towns, there's a very different look to people like that. And then there's a look of people who just have more, um, more character in their face. and. And a lot of those people are people from small towns somewhere. And, you know, Nick Stahl was, uh, he was just a little baby at the time. And then, you know, you're, when he's killed, you're, your heart breaks. Leave me alone, all right? Hey, B, come over here. And what happened to you? Me? Shit, I, just, I told Don I was up there. Mm -hmm. I was on the ridge, I slipped, I fell, I was skinning the shit up. Where'd you go a little while ago when you were gone for a while? Where were you? Well, I went home to take a crap. What do you say? When I see him, he was coming down from 2nd Platoon's line on the ridge. I was up there on that ridge. I was past the line. And a fucking Jap guy came at me and tried to ban at me. So I... Killed him. God damn it, Ted. I told you I wanted the goddamn fucking truth and not in your kid games. You go fucking look for yourself. Because he's up there now. You don't take my word for it. You go goddamn fucking look for yourself. Where? Oh, man. I got it. Oh, oh, oh. I'm dying of life. <laughs> the thing that is sort of interesting about a lot of these characters is that this is a war and they're scared, but they're scared in different ways. You know, Dahl puts on bravado. Um, Fife doesn't understand why he's feeling so scared, and he tries, but he, you know, he's probably, I suppose, if it comes down to it, even though he's trying to overcome it, he's more cowardly, whereas some of the others have put on the bravado. 
This was a time in the in the forties when when men were men. And it was very important for men to be strong and to be virile and to be, you know, go out there and fight and do all that kind of stuff. So that was one of the things you had to get to, that you had to get actors who really understood the mentality of that time. And and then there were people like like Adrian Brody who just he just looked old fashioned. He looked like a person of the period who, who belonged in this movie. And Jim Caviezel had that too. It was just something that um, you just felt there was an old soul in his body. Jim Caviezel was a surprise. I just got his picture in the mail and I looked at his resume, which was very tiny, but he was represented. He had a manager who was a person I knew and I figured if, if she was his manager, he must be very special because she's very special. And um, so that's the reason I saw him, not because there was anything on his resume that indicated that he was, he was right for this or not. You know, Dash was very young at that time and he's little chubby cheeks and, and he just didn't look like anybody else. And he's so inventive. I mean, Dash is just an incredible person. I shouldn't have knocked those boys' heads together. Did you see how the colonel looked at me? Did you see? Maybe it wasn't them that did, that, that did the ball cutting. Oh, what do I do now? Maybe they didn't, maybe they didn't know that. Maybe they was a gift. <laughs> Company commander's job, it ain't mine. You out of your mind? I ain't, I ain't no good writing no letters. You told me you would. Say anything to them when they're like that. Somebody ought to do it. What did you write? And I think one of the things that's always important for me, you want actors that you want to be around because you don't want egos. You don't want people who are gonna just be needy and, and wanting all your attention and wanting everybody else's attention. You want it, it's a group, it's a team. I think that the main thing he wanted was, he wanted a certain transparency that the actor was able to put their own ego aside and, and just inhabit the character. You about finished it? Look here, Maisie, I gotta ask you something. Do you think there's any germs in this mud? Germs? Sure there's germs. You really think so? <laughs> Hell yes. Don't you read the papers? This island is loaded with all kinds of germs. And where do you find germs? In dirt. Malaria germs. No, no, no. Malaria is from mosquitoes. No. Well, sure. But where do they get them? From dirt. No, no, they get them from, from humans who got malaria. Okay, sure, but you know, where do they come from first? Everybody knows germs come from dirt and being dirty. You'll probably be sick as a dog tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, Till. You're a son of a bitch, Maisie. Yes, I am. Okay. I think the kind of actor who works best with Terry is probably somebody who's extremely flexible, that doesn't get hung up on lines and words and things and is able to to change as things go on. Terry, as I understand it, will will shoot the dialogue and then we'll do the same scene again without the dialogue and everybody will have to do what they just did but without any dialogue. And that's difficult for actors because a lot of them um, depend on the words in order to be able to communicate and and he wants you to depend on 
what you're able to give to the character without the words. Well, there was, I think it was there for one or two. So he decided on this project that maybe the best thing to do was that I would put the people, the actors, on videotape, edit down the tapes, and send him the best of what we had. And that's how that process worked. When you look at a tape, you see something that you may not have seen in the room. Or if somebody reads and they're very subtle, you may just go, oh, well, OK. Or, I mean, Ben Chaplin, for example, is a very, very, very subtle actor. And if he was reading in a room, you might not see oh, the amazing thing that's going on in his eyes. And if it's, the, if it's near the end of the day, or if it's lunchtime and you're hungry, you're not really giving the actors your full focus. And when you can tape them and go back three days later when all the fun that happened in the room is gone, and you look at it and you go, wow, I didn't remember how great this person was. That's the advantage of having those tapes, as opposed to just doing it in the room. Take me back. Take me back. But they never should have made me go. It's their fault. It ain't mine. I, I didn't need no discipline like I was a dog. I can't, I can't do that. I won't go and beg them. But, but I, I appreciate you trying to help. No, I, I mean it. Yeah, I do. It's just, it's just how bad do you want to get back in? You know how bad. We thought we would be. Mm -hmm. no, this one what I said to Terry was, let's just get the actors that we like the most and then figure out where they belong rather than trying to fit them into parts in the beginning. And let's just see, because maybe one will relate more to one part, or maybe we feel after looking at them that, that someone would be better in another part. I don't think you understand what's going on down here, sir. We've been taking a lot of fire and we've had heavy casualties. I was planning on reinforcing them, but we had something bad happen. A man got shot, had his guts shot out on a slope. Caused quite a bit of upset. And that's taken care of now, and I'm planning on reinforcing now. Over. And that's really, that's really what happened a lot. I would read people for one part, and then Terry would look at these tapes that I had made and say, oh, bring them back and have them read this other part. And all of the actors, I mean, I think all of them came back several times to read different roles. That guy's much right to be here as you have. There's certain people that I just feel are just going to become big, big stars. And Tom was one of those people. He just had this wonderful, like, a little Redford, a little Marlon Brando, a little bit James Dean. I don't know. He was just he was just a complex person that I just really responded to. You see me walking down the street, you don't talk to me. You don't see me. You, you and me ain't friends no more, okay? I was the only joke around. Forget it now, go on. You try to talk to me again, I'll knock you down too. I'll so we, we 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 brought him in several times to try different characters. And he, he, he didn't really embody any one particular person. Well, you give all them boys my best. You can come with me if you want. I'll help you along. No, it's nice and quiet. Peaceful up here. I'll just slow you up. There'll be somebody along. And then we finally used him as the character whose leg gets shot off. And, and he was great. But, but his auditions, you just look at those auditions and you go, wow, this guy is amazing. I think I'm looking for people who make me feel something. Who, you know, it, it, it's interesting. When I, very often, I am the person who has to read with them. Sometimes, like in the case of Thin Red Line, I had um, a reader, and he read with almost everybody, and that's great. It's a wonderful, it's a wonderful um, tool to have, a wonderful help. But sometimes I have to do it, and 
I find with people who are really good, I get so engaged in watching them that sometimes I forget to do my lines or or I find they pull me into the point that I'm, you know, if it's a nervous scene, I will feel, I start to feel what the character I'm reading feels, which is bizarre because I'm not an actress. But the good people can, can involve you in that way and they can make it real. Colonel, I refuse to take my men on a frontal attack. It's suicide. I've lived with these men for two and a half years, huh, Colonel. I am not going to send them to their deaths. And that's final. Over. Now attack, Staros! That's a direct order! Sir, I must tell you that I refuse to obey your order. Working with Terry is very different from other directors because a lot of what Terry wants is in his head. And so it's kind of hard to get a real fix on, on what it is. And it's sort of like, well, let's experiment and maybe this will be it or maybe that will be it. Terry is, says that he has a problem, that he falls in love with everybody. He's so enamored of actors. And, and looking back on these tapes, I, I realized we could have cast this movie like 15 times. There were so, so many really, really good actors. And some of those auditions, you could have just printed and put them right in the movie. I mean, it was extraordinary. And it's because, because it was so well written because he gave them material to work with. They were all good. <laughs>